Hey, what's up? I'm Aaron Lewis, and you're watching Artisan News. You know, Townline was intentionally transitional. Um, you know, I needed to make that transition in order to get to where I'm at now. And uh, you know, Country Boy, Country Boy, I wrote that song on a bet with my plumber. Um, he actually he bet me that I that I wouldn't write a country song, so I wrote Country Boy. And uh, it actually, I just got the plaque for it as a single Country Boy, just went platinum. And uh, so that was my, my first attempt at a country song. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's cool that it went platinum. That, and, you know, I mean, there was really... I think rock radio played that song more than country radio did. So for it to have gone platinum as a country song, that was, that was, it's pretty cool. I consider myself very lucky that, that I was able to have George on that track before he did pass away. That for him, that made seven decades that he was on the music charts. So, uh, and six decades for Charlie. Um, yeah, I certainly hope so. And, you know, I don't, I don't want to offend anybody by saying that. Um, you know, Stained was, was the vehicle that, that put me on the map and allowed me to make that transition in the first place. Um, but at the same time, you know, as an artist, I'd, I'd I'd like to stand on my own two feet and and be able to inevitably play shows that, yeah, I I, I sang for for Stained and I wrote all those songs, but you know, I don't think at this point, I don't think when Darius Rucker plays a country show, I don't think people yell out for Hootie and the Blowfish songs all night long. So no, you know, I use him as an example because, you know, he did the crossover as well. The fact that radio hasn't really come around to playing my songs yet, there's, there's a little bit of a backlash there. Um, you know, it, it seems like the artists that I end up playing with and doing shows with are fans of what I do. Um, it's just one of those weird things. It's such a, it's such a, a good old boys network in Nashville. It's so political in Nashville and, and, you know, I'm not one to necessarily play along you know, I, I tend to stick to my guns, and and sometimes that's not what they want you to do. Nashville is a it is a machine. You know, it it has it has the writers that write all the songs, and then it has the performers that go into the studio and record them, and then go out on tour and play them. And I don't want anything to do with with somebody writing songs for me. And so I don't necessarily play along with the game. So that's that's kind of hindered things a little bit. But here I am almost five years later after switching gears and going to country and I'm, I'm playing sold-out shows every night. And, and, uh, and, and selling hard tickets and not having to give my tickets away through a radio station like so many of those artists have to do. 
So I, I'm, okay, I'm okay with how things are going. I have no complaints. And uh, maybe they'll come around and maybe they won't. I, I think I've, I've proven already that I really don't want any part of that pop slash bro country that that seems to be so prevalent on the country radio stations these days. I I don't really find very much country about it. Um, you know, the artists that you just mentioned, Waylon Jennings and Johnny Cash and, and Willie Nelson and Merle Haggard and George Jones and Hank Jr. That's that's country to me you know it's it has slowly moved away from that especially once we hit the 90s um you know there was there was still some some artists that were that were definitely country but you know it's it's slowly but surely moved to a a poppier based genre where these days it almost seems like the genre is full of artists that should be pop artists, but you know are a little tiny bit too country for pop. And uh, you know, I'm I'm desperately clutching to country music and what was country music and what I recognize as country music. What my grandfather, you know played for me as a kid and and you know that's country to me I kind of I really didn't pay attention to the to the morphing because I was in a rock band so you know what I know as country is the old stuff yeah for sure um you know certainly to get played on the radio will be will be nice when it comes around but I, I'm certainly not going to change what I'm doing in order to get on radio. We're trying to get the final details put together. You know, it took a while for for all the record label stuff to iron out and 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 get solid on that side of things, and um, and so we're in the next couple months. I'll be hitting the studio and. We're in the last we're in the last stages of of a record being recorded where we're trying to figure out who's going to produce it and where we're going to do it and that type of stuff and and then it'll be into the studio and you know I recorded I recorded the last record in about thirty two hours it was seven four hour sessions or eight four hour sessions or something like that and. Uh, so once everything is put together and it's ready to go and I didn't even have all the songs written for the last record when we did it in eight yeah. four hour sessions. I was have a lot now, I, the whole thing is written and ready to go so it should it shouldn't even take 32 hours this time. Yeah. So as soon as it's ready to go and we've got it all lined up it should be a, a pretty quick in and out process. I haven't heard it yet. The concept and idea of it sounds a little strange to me. Um, but I haven't heard it. You never know. Golf. Um, you know, the hunting still is, and the fishing and whatnot. And I tend to be able to fish more often without a camera guy with me than I do hunt. Um, but that TV show has facilitated so much more hunting for me than I would have otherwise. Otherwise, because, you know, my partner on the TV show is very independently wealthy and has a private plane and can swing in and pick me up after a show and fly us to wherever we're going to go and I can hunt that following morning that's how it all gets squeezed in yeah is is you know I could have one day off and 
that never would have facilitated a day of hunting unless I was lucky enough to be able to put it together wherever my day off was. Now he can swing in, pick me up right after I'm done playing the show. We go, we hunt for the whole day, hunt for the following morning, and then he drops me back off where I need to be for the next show before sound check. There's, there's pros and cons to it. You lose the the solitude aspect of 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 hunting where, you know, especially in a tree stand hunting for whitetail, you're by yourself up in the tree. But on the same hand, you're now not up in a tree by yourself. You have somebody to talk to and joke around with and and cut up with and have a good time with. And it's still cleansing in the sense that when I'm up in the tree, regardless of whether there's somebody in the tree with me or not, there's still nothing to think about but that deer that's going to walk in and, and being quiet and being still. And, and you know, you have your moments of, of looking. I look over my shoulder and whisper something to, to my camera guy and, and, you know, that type of stuff. But it still, it still does what it's supposed to do. The difference is that there is an expectation of getting that camera footage and i mean i've had i've had amazing hunts where just the biggest deer i've ever seen ever is coming in and it wasn't me that moved that the deer saw and then turned around and took off it was the camera and the camera guy so there's there's there is things that happen because there's two people in a tree, there's twice the human scent being delivered out in the air. There's all these extra things that that make it more difficult. We're able to hop to all different states, and and it's it it removes a lot of the limitations. But then having a camera in the tree with you so kind of adds. It, it's it's a it's, it's one a of those. It's a give it's and a give take. Yeah. The the golf tournament this year. Um, you know, it's it's the Aaron Lewis Invitational. Um, this year, we're gonna we're gonna spread the donations around a little bit and donate to a bunch of different things, um, a bunch of stuff for the military, um, still a bunch of stuff for for kid programs and things like that, and uh, and. And it'll be it'll be good again, you know. It's a it's a good time. It's a good cause. Um, we're just gonna spread things out this time. I mean, I wrote those songs too. Um, they're all a part of me. It depends on the mood that I'm in. Sometimes sometimes it bothers me that people can't help but yell out for staying songs all night long, even though I'm doing this and I'm. But again, I, I wrote those songs too. So, man, that's asking a lot. You know, I I would certainly be be blessed if that was the case. You know, I've been very blessed with with a with a career in this business for as long as I have, and and if I could continue to do what I'm doing and grow old doing it, that would and that would just add to the blessings that I've been so lucky to have so far. I'm too old to tour six to eight weeks at a time, six nights a week. I just, you know, it's not that my voice can't handle it, but my, I don't think my body can anymore. My back is all messed up permanently. Touring, I mean, I'm, I've got shows pretty much every weekend all the way through the rest of the year. And that's kind of that's the the country schedule is is weekends and then you get the week to do whatever um you know you right my my work week is just reversed my work week usually starts starts on on Thursday and ends on Sunday in the rock world for all those years you know you would play six nights a week all all through the work week and on the weekends and and be gone for six or eight weeks at a time, playing six nights a week for six or eight weeks, and 
And instead, this is now, you know, scheduled around the people that are working 40-hour work weeks and it's on the weekends.